I know it's important when my animal is talking to me in a late morning dream. And there was about three of them in succession. About The theme was about culture and what happens when culture kind of goes awry. Like the first one she showed me is, is a, a pantomime, almost like a shadow play. And she was telling me, you know, in this dream, I can't remember exactly what the dream was about. What she was telling me, what came came away from it, is that even though culture is not real, culture is a medium, and human beings itself need culture to survive. That's that's the reason that we're able to come out of the trees and come out of the savannas and multiply and become the dominant species on the planet is because of our culture, not because of our being. We're not the strongest. We're not the fastest. The reason that we're the smartest is because we have a culture that keeps reteaching us over and over and over again. Lions and other animals can't do that. That's why we can have language and writing and all the other sophisticated things that we do is because the knowledge is being transmitted down from Prince to the children and perpetuated. It's always the part that gets left out, even though we talk about it a lot, we don't talk about the importance of culture and what it does and what the meaning and the fact and the necessity of what culture is. Culture is there for us to survive and the species to survive. There's a reason that we put certain things in place over hundreds of thousands of years is because culture and the lessons that we have learned in culture are the means to our survival. But the thing is, it's also the most optional thing. You don't have to choose a culture. That's how we have so many of them. Your biology is not optional. What, what you have in your genes, how genes express themselves is not optional. How you look, what kind of type of food that you could possibly survive on, all that kind of stuff is, is not optional. Your environment where you live uh, the temperature, the surrounding vegetation is not optional. That's set for you. The only optional part in this equation, this three-step equation, is culture. How you act with an environment, what you do with an environment is optional. Also, whether you survive in that environment on long term is also optional. Just like socialism is the shadow of capitalism, Socialism probably would not exist without capitalism because capitalism, industrial capitalism is the reason that socialism arose. The same thing with culture. Culture is not real, it's a shadow. Without the biology, which is the person and the light, which is the environment, the culture would not exist is because it takes the light and the person to cast a shadow, which is culture. So without either one of those two, there is no culture. This culture is a projection of those two things. Of those two things, culture is a projection. Now, what it projects is dependent on the quality of those two things, the environment and the human beings that are inside that environment. I'm saying all this to say this, the success or failure of a people is dependent upon those two things, right? Number one. But the third thing, the success of a failure of a people in competition with another group of people is culture. And culture is the one thing that we as black people kind of really overlook. We ignore why one culture succeeds and one culture fails. 
This is also true for matriarchal cultures. Jung's student, Von Franz, talked about this, about matriarchies. And she gave an example of three, three successful mat so-called matriarchies where women are actually in charge of the society. They may not be the face of it sometimes, but they are in charge of society, right? There's three of them that she used as an example there. One was Native American, the other two were white. As they describe a matriarchy, some people would dither of whether it was matriarchy or patriarchy. What I'm saying is we're just gonna use her examples on the face as an example, as a comparison to the black community. She said that the one factor, even though the women were in charge and the women transmitted culture and yada, 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 and how families were formed and how uh, goods were passed down and yada, yada, yada. The one factor why they succeeded, and I thought this was interesting, is guess what? All three uplifted their boys. Even in a so-called matriarchal society, all three uplifted their boys. They gave their boys the best. They gave the boys a special place in society because they believe that their future is dependent on how well they raise their boys. Now, those societies, according to them, were uh, the 1920s, the 1920s, 1930s, Indian society, which is, I do mean East Indian societies that were the women actually controlled society, but the thing is, guess what? They elevated their men. The modern day Jewish society that by their own standard, by their own saying, by their own reckoning, the Jewish society is a matriarchy. Why does this succeed? It's because they believe that elevating their boys, uh, educating their boys to the highest extent, that these boys or these men will elevate the society, will pull their society forward. And the third one was the nation of Iroquois. Even though they had a woman's council and they elected leaders, they elected people in position, they didn't elect women in position, they elected their boys in position. They took the best of their men and elevated them because they believed the same thing. And those were 50 matriarchal societies, Native American societies that worked the same way. Not one, but 50, all doing the same thing. There were no female chiefs, there was a male chief because they believed that it took the men to actually create and elevate and pull their society forward. Men pull a society forward. Men innovate, women do not. Women are basically stagnant and they take what the man creates and then they procreate it. Even in ancient men fight theology, men, Men create, women procreate. Women take what you what you have, the energy that you have, the initiative that you have, and they will enhance it. It's like when you buy a house or you create a tool or you have an idea, you will create it, you will initiate it, you will create it, but the women can flower it up and enhance it. That's procreation. The Mayan society in Native America, the reason it grew to that elevation and that amount of success is for the same reason. It is because even though it was a matriarchal a Native American society, the women put the men in charge because they believed that the men would create and elevate and pull their society forward, which it did for thousands and thousands of years. Which brings us to what I call a perverted matriarchy, which is the black community. It's the one matriarchy that does what? It might not be the first one. I can't say that because I don't know them all. But it's one of the matriarchies that does not do what? It does not elevate their men. In fact, it does the opposite. It pushes their men down. It pushes their men down and elevates themselves. This is the one society that uses their men as stepping stools. It's the one society that preferred to give the fruits of liberation to the enemy's female rather than giving it to her man. Now think about that. You fight for civil rights. You fight for a chance in your society for over a hundred years. And on the cusp of you getting it, with all the bloodshed, with all the marching, 
with all the thought, with all the energy put into it, on the cusp of it, guess what you do? You give those rights and those privileges not to your men, but to your enemy's female. Go back and look at Polly Murray's Jane Crow. And I may read the paper, not only Jane Crow, but the murdering the two crows. And it's the name of a paper, YouTube. It's not what you call hate speech. It has nothing to do with harming people. If you notice, the, ever, the short periods of time where black women actually elevated their men, the black community started to succeed. I'm not going to educate men. I'm going to place women over men. I'm going to educate women first. On and on and on and on, right? We're not going to elevate our men. The only place that a man was actually elevated, which is why the black church succeeded, is because they put the man in charge, put the pastor in charge. That's come the black church was strong for so long. And those men allowed innovation and some kind of progress and stability. But in 1945, when the soldiers came back for World War II and actually started to push the civil right, things started to move. You go back to the sleeping porter strike, the most successful strike probably in history. That was the one time there was no black female interference. All males, all males taking beatings, all males taking hunger. They trusted their men, they put their men in charge, and that's why that strike was successful. The second time it happened is when the women actually pushed their men out front to actually fight for civil rights from 1845 to 1965. And we push this society to the point where we were gonna get benefits and equal treatment from this society. We gained that because they pushed the men out front. But the black female intelligentsia saw that we gained those fruits and gained those privileges and guess what? They wanted it for themselves. So they wanted us, after we gained it, to go back to where we were, back to secondary status, and that they were going to lead this community. And from 1970, when the fruits and the rewards of civil rights were actually being handed out, black women took them. White women and black women took the fruits of civil rights and handed it out to each other. Guess what happened to the black community between 1970 even up until now, it's been stagnant. It hasn't gone anywhere. In fact, some people will say that it has regressed. It has decayed. You've gone from a 90% marriage rate. And even though it was high and for the time, and basically less than 10% out of a wedlock rate, right? To what? Now you have a 30% marriage rate, which is two, down two thirds. You have a 70 to 80% out of wedlock rate, which is up eight times. Almost an impossibility, right? You have 70% single mother households. Now, I would be with it if the black women had taken the fruits of civil rights, they had gone gangbusters, and they pulled the whole community up. They have not even pulled the community up. They have really they haven't really pulled themselves up for the most part. You see spots here or there where some women succeed, some women fail, but the vast majority of women, black women especially, are in poverty. The vast majority. Even in black men because they're men. And number two, men are necessary in any society as far as earnings and work. Black men are still ahead of black women in wages and work and jobs. Even in marriage, they're still ahead. But what they effectively have done as far as economics is push black men from being second and within 20% of white men down to third. Guess who they put over you? White women took what black men had and elevated themselves and they knocked black men down to, down to, down to third place and it's not even close. White women almost on par with white men as far as earnings and how much they make. So basically, you've recreated the new white man. And I've heard sisters, even corporate America, said their biggest enemy is not black men. Their biggest enemy is not white men. 
the biggest enemy in corporate America is competition with that white woman. I think there's a video out about that. I, I'm going to see if I can find it and put that together at some point. So with all that, and everybody says, we just, we know all that stuff. It's all in history. You've gone over it a thousand times. So where are you going with this? Go back to when I said culture is a choice. You can't do anything about your biology. You can't do anything about your environment to, to within reason. But what you can do is choose how you're going to react and act within said environment. That's the one thing you do have. That's the one choice that you do have. How you're going to operate within that environment and your success or failure, not only in that environment, but also against other groups is going to be determined by your environment. Because guess what? When white women got civil rights and white women got affirmative action and white women got elevated, guess what they didn't do? They didn't drag their men down. Is marriage down? Yes. White women having more out of wedlock births, right? births, yes. But white people, even with feminism, went from an 80% marriage rate down to a 60% marriage rate. The reason that the marriage rate is so skewed to 50% is because black marriages uh, end at, at such a high rate. The, the average black marriage is five years and the divorce rate in the, in the black community is almost 80%. Black women are out of whack with every other culture. I do mean every other culture. And that's a choice. Now, they'll blame Jermaine for the reason that they're not married. They'll, they'll blame Jermaine that Jermaine is not worth it. Jermaine doesn't earn. Jermaine is not socialized correctly. Jermaine does this. You, you, when I say Jermaine, I mean your dusty black Jermaines are not worth it. And you don't make enough money. You don't work. Yada, yada, yada. In other words, if white men would accept them, they would leave Jermaine behind. Remember this white woman said, black men begin in a hole. Black men begin in a hole where your own women put white men on a pedestal. Black women are one of the few cultures demand more from their men than the men on the outside. They demand more. Black men are one of the few men on the planet that have to give more and get less and are expected to give more and get less. That's what you're taught. You're taught that black women should be put on a pedestal and worshipped. And if they're not worshipped, then you're not doing your job as a man. Which goes back to the successful matriarchies and this unsuccessful gynocracy. Because you can't go at a Jewish mother about her son. Maybe your daughter, but you cannot go at a Jewish mother's son. She, she will kill you over her son. Ron Franz talked about how adoring Indian mothers are to their sons, how their women elevate their sons, how their women want their sons educated to the highest extent. Same thing with the Mayans, same thing with the nation of Iroquois. That doesn't exist in the black community, whether it's taught by the slave master, whether it's something that naturally occurred because of the slave farms that we were actually bred in, I don't know. But the strong, independent black woman has been bred and passed down and accepted by this black female culture. And the diminution of black men and black males to sacrifice to to elevate the black female has been passed down and and pushed forward and elevated. I mean, hell, we even here in the manosphere. Black men are not here, even the manosphere, trying to beg women to let them lead. What they're trying to do is beg women, black women, to act right and basically accept them as they are so that we can actually keep this decaying society we call the black community together. Because we know that without the women, we cannot save this community. And we know we have kissed enough behind in 
this black community so that the women should be happy and they're not. We know that since black men in this society do not have enough power to make them white women, that they're upset and they're pissed off. And basically, that's how come they rag on you all the time. That's how come they point to you all the time. They blame you for going to jail. They blame you for going to prison. They blame you. Even though nine times out of 10, and this is coming from a dude from the hood, 90% of the time, the reason that black men go to jail, go to prison is because they're doing one of two things. Are they trying to be tough enough to prove themselves worthy for a black woman or are they trying to make money for a black woman? Why do black women say they love drug dealers and scammers? Because they know they're going to get the bulk of the money that's going to be spent on them. And when you go to prison, you go to jail, they replace you with another drug dealer or scammer. They rotate you in and out. In other words, you're doing the job they want to do. But you're a surrogate for that. The same way that they took the black man out of school in the fifth or sixth grade and made him work for the family so they could spend that money to educate that girl because they didn't want that girl working in Miss Ann's house. Which, you know, understandably, she could be molested, she could be sexually assaulted, she could be anything in that white woman's house. Understandable. But you sacrificed your boys, you sacrificed your future or the community's future by suppressing your boys like that. And that idea and that culture has been passed down even to this day. There's bills and, and laws and things that are there to actually enhance and elevate black boys. And guess what? They're always destroyed by black women because black women do not feel that boys or black men should be elevated over themselves. What did Polly Murray say? She said that with, for the black men, or their, or their black brothers, either we get there together or we don't get there at all. In other words, if we're not part of it, we're not elevated just like you, we're going to tear it down. We're not going to get there. And guess what? We didn't get there. Even though we elevated the black female, we still didn't get there. What did Nina Turner say? I just played that. She said, what's wrong? She said the Democratic Party, the one that black women love, emasculates black men and elevates black women, which is exactly what black women love. If you look at any dating show, any talk show, anything that's popular and on social media, there's two things that happen is the elevation of black women and the de emasculation of black men. Black women love to emasculate black men. The balloon pop show, the reason it is so successful and this is coming from a Nigerian woman that actually noticed this. The reason that it is successful is not is because it gets men and women together. It is the humiliation and emasculation of black men in, in, on a show, on social media. And black women eat it up. How do black women elevate themselves? By stepping on and emasculating black men. And when that blows up in their face and they blame the black men for allowing them to emasculate and dehumanize them. Black, just, just look at the prison population, right? All those dudes, and they went to prison for selling drugs. Guess where the money went? The money went to the black females. How do I know it's right in the middle of that stuff? I know too many black dudes that went to prison, that went to jail, and their baby mamas got all that money. And when they, when they got out of prison, guess what? Did those black women invest that money and triple that money and double it down and make the money work for the, for themselves and the family so that black that a black man, once he got out, he gets something for his labor? No. Money was gone. Money was gone. It was all spent. Look, look at Freeway Ricky. Freeway Ricky. Freeway Ricky Ross. He made $100 million within 10 years. At least a hundred million dollars within ten years. He's making he was making over a million dollars a week for the whole enterprise. He went to prison. Not even ten years. He went to prison. He got out. Where's his money? He had women. He had family. He had females with the money went in businesses that that was that he started. That the females could have ran. He gets out. Where's his money? Females squandered it. 
But again, you, you you see the whole community get busted up over this over this drug money. But since we have a gynocracy, it goes nowhere, right? The Latinos get a hold of the same thing. I can tell you because I'm here in Los Angeles. They get a hold of the same thing. They're global cartels. They buy up whole neighborhoods. They buy politicians because their females empower their males. I'm not saying that drugs are right. I'm not saying that being a cartels are cool. I'm not saying that the cartels don't cause problems. They do basically the most violent cities in the world are, where car are cartel owned. Colombia is still suffering from cartel. Okay, but the thing is that the money that these men earned got turned into something. Miami was built off of cartel money, not black male drug money, but Latin cartel money. Miami is one of the most prosperous cities on the planet. Built on cartel money is because their women elevated their men, no matter whether it's negative or not. Did the men go to prison? Did they get killed? Yes, they did. But they elevated their men. The men are still elevated amongst the Latino community. Your men pull your society forward. Your women in, in charge pull your society backwards. Greatest example of that is the WNBA right now. Black female ran. Why is it imploding? Even, in, even though it had its best year. Its best year. Why is it imploding? And I'm going to do something on that later. I got a rant for the WNBA later. But the thing is, and this is the close, this is a coup de grace. If you, if you remember nothing else about this whole talk, and I know I've rambled, and I apologize for rambling, but I wanted to connect the dots. I wanted to set my case out first. Black women have made a choice. Black men, it's not your fault of the condition of the black community. It's not your fault. Black men made the choice of elevating themselves by emasculating you and dehumanizing you. They'd rather give the fruits of, la of your labor, not just their labor, but of your labor to the white women and the white men for status and attention. There's nothing that you can do about that. The, all these women, all these degrees, they have more black female lawyers than we can count. Why is it a white woman, a white Jewish woman that has to go be a lawyer and get that black man out of prison or that black man off of death row? I get upset every time I see a black man get off a death row or a black man has been falsely accused in prison and as a white female next to him as his lawyer. I get heated. These are your men. These are your boys. Your men. Your boys. And you let the society grind them up into pulp. In fact, not only you let them grind them up into pulp, you actually feed your boys and your men to this society. I can't tell you how many black women take a check to put their boys in special education to put their boys in Ritalin for a check. Can't tell you how many black women have babies out of wedlocks, kick their man out of the house because they want a check from the government. They want Uncle Sam to be the black baby daddy. It doesn't even get called out enough. It doesn't get called out enough for what it does to your society. And black women, I always say that they are pawns in the game except it's instead of them making logical choices for logical reasons. In the 1960s, when you chose welfare over your man that was barely working, that's a logical economic choice. That's not his fault. That's a choice that you made. Polly Murray said back in 63, or in the 1960s, when Eleanor Roosevelt put her in position to guide the feminist movement, she thought it would be better to basically put white women in charge to erase racism. She didn't trust you. She said there wasn't enough of you. And so she believed that you as men had gotten the black community as far as it could go. And basically what she said that the most important group in the black family was the black female. Because what did she say? If black women are denied a chance, black men are denied rights, then women and older people would suffer. It's because this 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 country grinds up black men. And she didn't think that would stop. But guess what they didn't uh, start? They, what, they, what they didn't stop, even though it was civil rights, they did not stop them from grinding you up, from throwing you into the gristmill. 
except in, in, in fact, they actually fed you to the mill. Who do you think a black woman selling the drugs for? I can't tell you how many women asked me to sell drugs for them because they wanted to live a certain lifestyle. You, it, it, that's why I get heated when I hear in, in a major city saying, who would you rather date, a nine to five guy or a scammer or a drug dealer? It's always a scammer and drug dealer. Why? Because scammer and drug dealers, even though it's short lived, because they're gonna go to jail, they're gonna go to prison, for that five years, that four or five years where they're out, they're gonna live really good. They're gonna live high on a hog and then they're gonna give them an experience. And that's what they want. And they'd rather be the second, third, fourth, fifth baby mama to a scammer or a drug dealer than build a strong family. They have chosen this path. They have chosen this route. They have chosen this culture. So black men, black men, black men, let them take their L. So I've tried, I know you want to save this community. You know, that's a noble thing. I know that super soldier chip goes off in your head, right? I know the winter soldier chip goes off in your head and you want to comply. Because you want, the, like Dr. Johnson said, the velvet painting of that perfect black family. Perfect black family that never was. What did that woman say? I miss the days when men would provide, protect, and shut up. Where Papa would work 12, 13 hours, come in, give Mama his check. Go, go look at fences, right? Go look at fences. You think Troy ran that house? You think Troy ran that house? He did not. And she let him know that he did not and there's one scene in fences that I'm going to make a short out of now, this woman was married to this dude for 20 years had gotten out of prison and worked himself to death to get her a house and get her a middle class lifestyle and there's one scene when his where his brother was committed and he signed the papers and she blamed him for signing the papers. And he said, you know, Rose, you know, I can't read. Now, this woman is there with him for 20 years. And she can read. She can read. She can write. She's educated. But she never taught her man. Why? It's because that man was useful in the place that he was. That man was useful in the place that he was. She even took in his, his bastard baby. That, that, that girl. It's because she know that if she didn't take that baby, he would leave and she would not have a lifestyle. She never taught him to read, ever. In the 20 some odd years she's married to him, she never sat down, taught the man to read because she didn't want that man elevated over her. He was useful where he was. And her being able to read and write gave her an advantage over him because she had to take care of the bills. She had to pay the bills. She had to talk to the bill collectors. She had to talk to anybody had anything to do with business. She ran the house. And that's the way black women see us. So, stop trying to save them. They've made this choice. Even with so-called Kamala Harris that they go and cuckoo for Cocoa Pops over, right? The last thing she mentioned that she could do for black men is always, well, you, we I'm allow you to start a, you know, a, start a small business. That's going to serve you. There's a bill that's been in since the Obama administration. There's a bill that's been going coming through about the study of black men and black boys and how you can actually make them better, train them better, teach them better, all this other kind of stuff. What kind of programs you should start? There's bills that's been around since the Obama administration about the study for black boys and black men. It's still there. The only thing that's probably been around longer that nobody will touch is reparations. Those two things go together. The elevation of black men and reparations are a no-go in Congress. And even amongst the black congressmen, they don't even talk about it. That's how bad it is. You have to dig to actually find it. The only people who talk about it are white men. Because your women do not want you to have power in this culture. That's why I call it the gynocracy. And I get jumped on for it. But nobody will come challenging me about it. There's not one scholar, one YouTuber, one social media person will actually sit down over a period of six months to a year because that's how long it's going to take and go through it because they know it's true. And in this culture, that's why I always play it. It's always Jermaine's fault. And your ladies in the UK and in the West are learning from 
your black females. They're learning for your black females. They're trying now. They're trying to make what you have done because it sounds good and adopt those principles. Even though the reason that it works here is because you have white men and white women making it work for you. This is also going away. But anyway, I've probably spoken too long, man. Stop trying to save them. Culture is a choice. They've made their choice. They've made their bid. This is why the black community is in stagnation where it, where it is. They made their choice. Let them lie in it. Culture is a choice. Anyhow, y'all, let me get out of here. I've gone on long enough. Peace out.